Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slant Lens, we're out here on location photographing clouds because we want to test how interval controls speed when you're doing time lapse and also to compare interval versus sped up footage. So let's get started and see what we can do. Before you watch this tutorial, sign up for our business coaching class. Take advantage of my almost 30 years of business experience. Let me help you grow your business. Sign up today. Now get back to the lesson. First, I want to show how interval is going to control the speed of the clouds. I've got three cameras set up, one at two second interval, one at four second interval, and one at eight second interval. So we're using all of our SERP equipment today. We've got two Genie Minis and a Genie out there doing our time lapse for us. So here are those examples side by side, played back at 24 frames a second and not sped up. The clouds move at a slow pace, so at a two second interval, they're not moving very far in between exposures. When you go to a four second interval, they're moving further between exposures. When you go to an eight second interval, they're moving a lot more between the exposures. So now the clouds speed up, they can go faster. But they also move further in between each exposure. The longer the interval, the faster the clouds are gonna move. If I need 240 frames so I can get 10 seconds of time lapse, it only takes me about eight minutes to do a two second interval. But it's gonna take me 16 minutes to do a four second interval. It's gonna take me 32 minutes to get an eight second interval. So the reality is, the first eight minutes, I'm seeing the same clouds in our test, but the second eight minutes, I'm only seeing it on two cameras, and the last eight minutes, I'm only seeing it on the eight second interval camera. So you are need more clouds, it just keeps rolling over, but it does speed them up. So to get 240 frames or 10 seconds of time lapse, it's gonna take us a lot longer with that eight second interval versus the four second interval. That's just the way it is. When it came time to edit and put these time lapses on a timeline, we looked at them side by side, and you know what, the four second interval compared to a two second interval sped up 100%, it looked really similar, pretty hard to tell them apart. So I could have gone either way with these. When we looked at the eight second interval compared to the two second interval sped up 200%, I think the eight second interval looked just a little smoother. Uh, the two second interval sped up 200% was a little more choppy, so I'd probably go with the eight second interval. That's just my personal choice, but looking at the two of them together, it's pretty hard to tell. I mean, they're pretty similar. The reality, clouds move pretty quick, and so you're gonna need a fairly short interval to get the information you need. Now, if you're shooting mushrooms or something growing, Obviously, you're gonna need a very long interval. I like a shorter interval because it gives me a lot of data to be able to work with. For one, if I shoot two second intervals, even if I love the four second interval better, I can throw all the odd numbers out on a timeline, renumber them and bridge, and I've got now a four second interval. I can throw all the odd numbers out again, renumber them and bridge, and I now have an eight second interval. So more data gives me more options. I can speed it up, I can throw them out and create new timelines, but I have all the information. So for me, I love a two second interval. I use that most of the time. If the clouds are just super fast, like they're rolling in fast, then I may go to a one second interval. Or if the day is really slow, and look at those clouds going there, so far away, they're moving so slow, then I'm gonna definitely go to an eight second interval before I'm gonna get anything out of it. There's no reason for me to get all that data because I'm never gonna use it. It becomes the art of time lapse, it really does. You have to make some decisions about interval, you've gotta make decisions about shutter speed. Shutter speed's not gonna affect your clouds not like interval does. They don't move fast enough for that. So let's see some of your time lapse. Join our Facebook group. Get some time lapse on there. I love to see what other people are doing, the things that they're creating, it's a lot of fun. So join our Facebook group and uh, keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. Need some gaff tape? How about a lighting kit? Well, you're in luck. We teamed up with Roscoe and Photoflex for the June giveaway and there are four lucky winners. Sign up for our giveaways over at theslendlens.com and you can walk away with a case of gaff tack from Roscoe or a Starlight Octodome Lighting Kit from Photoflex. This is the moment where we time lapse your finger going over to hit the subscribe button to the slant lens. Your grandma already hit her subscribe button because she's really fast. How come you're not as fast as your grandma? She hit the button faster than you did. Subscribe to the slant lens. Don't miss out on what we're doing.